Well, that should do it. Just finishing up installing the cellular signal booster on my RV. And on today's video, I'm going to tell you what cellular booster we decided to get, what the criteria was for selecting uh, the booster, and also I'm going to do a test toward the end of the video. So stick around. All right, I'm safely down from the top of my RV. Uh, and as you can see, as you look around here, we are uh, out in uh, the sticks. This is my mother-in-law's farm. And uh, you know, despite all the beauty around here and the peaceful uh, surroundings, one of the trade-offs is that we don't get a very good cellular signal out here. And it's not just a problem here at my mother-in-law's farm, but it's a problem in many areas we go to, areas that we camp at or church, uh, rural churches that we uh, go to. And, uh, you know, we really rely on our cellular connection for, for our internet. Since we don't have cable modem or, or DSL or anything like that, uh, we really have to rely on our Sprint hotspot or our Verizon phones for hotspots for all of our internet uh, connectivity. Um, so after struggling, as I said, for many years, I decided to finally, uh, you know, bite the bullet and, and buy a cellular signal booster for the RV. What we decided to get was the SureCall Fusion 4 Home Cellular Signal Booster. And that has the outdoor omnidirectional antenna and the indoor whip. Now, there are a lot of different considerations uh, when it comes to choosing a signal uh, booster and I tell you what there's there's so much to learn out there and you would really uh, do yourself a, a, a great service to do some research uh, so you don't end up getting the wrong thing so some of the criteria that I had for selecting what uh, I ended up getting were number one it had to be a multi-band and the sure call definitely was it covered it says it covers all of the major carriers including Sprint and Verizon. You want to make sure that whatever uh, cellular booster you get does cover the bands that you obviously need to boost. Uh, and they're not all created equal in that, that respect. So that's uh, number one. That was, the, that was probably the main consideration for selecting a cellular booster. Uh, number two, uh, they had, there are different kinds of boosters out there and they basically were broken down into two main categories and that is they had a mobile version and there's a stationary version. And uh, the mobile versions typically uh, are designed for uh, you know, boosting a signal in a vehicle as it's driving down the road. Um, you know, one of the benefits of that is, is that it, it will boost your signal as you're driving down the road if, you, if that's important to you, uh, especially if you're out in the boondies or something. And then you can uh, capture that signal in your car or your, in your truck or whatever. Uh, the problem is it only boosts the signal in a, in, into a very small area within the vehicle. They're not designed to cover a big area of square footage. Whereas the stationary versions are more for uh, an RV when it's parked at a campground or, or you know wherever you're parked, or for a home that's in a stationary position. Uh, it's not designed to, to work as you're driving down the road, but the uh, uh, transmitter transmits the signal inside your RV or home to a much bigger area. So, and uh, you know, within those categories, their subcategories are that they make them both for RV and for homes. And uh, I tell you what, what I realized after looking at these, the RV versions were oftentimes um, more expensive than the home versions. But I didn't see any uh, difference between the two as far as specifications. So, so I decided to go with the home version because it was cheaper. The main difference is that you have to make sure that for an RV you want an omnidirectional antenna. A lot of the home versions will have a, a unidirectional or, or what they call a Yagi antenna that you have to point at the, um, um, the cell tower, uh, whereas the omnidirectional antenna uh, will receive a signal from all different directions. Uh, also, the home versions oftentimes come with, uh, they can come with a panel antenna for the inside or a whip antenna. We, I chose one that had a whip antenna because it has a smaller footprint and uh, doesn't take up any wall space. Um, so, 
So mobile versus stationary, we chose the stationary because as far as we're concerned, we're, it's more important for us to have a good cell signal while we're parked, wherever we're parked, and for to have that signal cover the entire inside of, of our trailer. The third thing that, that was a consideration was the quality. If you look online, there is a myriad of, of uh, signal boosters out there that you can buy. They range for anywhere from sub $100 all the way up to over $500. Um, you know, and, and in this particular type of product, uh, high-tech product, you really don't want to cheap out. I try and find a balance between something that's affordable, but something that has a good reputation and has a, uh, and is a typically a higher quality brand. Um, and SureCall definitely fits that bill. And then lastly, the uh, last consideration is the uh, price. There are many uh, uh, boosters out there that range anywhere from uh, you know sub 100 all the way up to fi over 500 dollars. Um, the SureCall Fusion 4 Home was 269 dollars at Amazon. And by the way, there's a link underneath uh, in the description if you'd like to if you're interested in buying one and you'd like to support our channel. That's that's one way to do that. Uh, it is an affiliate link. We get a, just a tiny uh, commission on that, but uh, it does help support us. Uh, anyway. I digress. Uh, so it's $269. Uh, you know, to me, the the uh, the cost versus you know the the specifications. I, I thought that the sure call that we bought was a nice balance between those things. Um, some people may ask, well, why not WeBoost? Uh, WeBoost is definitely a uh, considered a high quality brand but I think in reality when you look at the specifications up up against one another the sure call that we bought versus the we boost of this of similar quality um, you know it was about a hundred the we boost was about a hundred dollars more but the specifications were very similar so I think in, in the case of we boost you're really paying for the name in some respects so you know that's just my opinion. Don't don't take my word for it. But uh, uh, they've got got a lot of good reviews on both ends and some bad reviews on both ends. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the the uh, sure call and and confident that you know it's as good of quality uh, as the Wee Boost is. So those were the criteria that we used to select it. Um, now let's take a look and see how it works. So if you're not familiar with the way these signal boosters work, they're pretty simple. Uh, there's an outside antenna, uh, either an omnidirectional or what they call a Yagi antenna, which is a, a, a single directional antenna that you have to point to the tower. We have the omnidirectional antenna, uh, which receives a signal from all sides. And it takes the, the cell signal uh, and brings it into the trailer via a coaxial cable and it it brings it to the transmitter where it boosts the signal and then it retransmits it into the interior of the trailer. Alright, so let's test this out and see if it really does work. Um, and just to reiterate, uh, we've got our Sprint hotspot. We use that's an unlimited Sprint hotspot and we use that for internet as much as we can. But when that's not working, which usually if we're not near a major city, that doesn't work too well, uh, then we use our Verizon phones as our hotspots if we don't have Wi-Fi available. And so, anyway, so let's test this out. I've got my phone up here. This is our Verizon phone. And um, I've got this uh, signal meter on. And you can see right now that it's reading two bars, uh, 4G. But I've been told that that those meters, that you know, how many bars you have, is not really a, a, an accurate uh, reading of what your cellular signal strength is. So that's why I got this uh, signal meter, which actually reads the the decibels that are coming into your phone. Uh, now I've got the uh, cell cellular booster off. You can see the power light is off, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. Uh, and make sure that it is reading correctly. All right, so right now we're reading negative 111 decibels. All right, so I'm gonna try and turn this thing off while holding the camera and my phone at the same time. I'm gonna turn this on, I mean. Okay, the light just went on. Let's see if I can 
It's powering up. Boom. We now have negative, it's getting, getting better, negative 55 decibels. I mean, that is really good. Of course, my phone is right up against the antenna, so it's not going to be, you know, quite that good throughout the trailer. Uh, but this antenna will reach throughout the trailer, and it is significantly better than without it. So, now let's test the sprint out. I'm going to turn this, now I'm going to turn this off again, and I want to show you our sprint hotspot. And here's... You got one bar LTE. Um, what, look what happens when I turn this on. Okay, watch. Boom. Five bars. So I'm hoping that you know it helps us when we're out in the on country churches and things like that, where we're uh, you know cell signals are very weak. Uh, I wanted to test it out here at my mother-in-law's farm because I kind of knew the baseline out here. I knew what to expect without it, and this definitely helps. And I'm, I'm happy with the purchase.